If we didn't know what it was, we would take an experiment and we would do the chart against time. And perhaps we think, oh, maybe it's a first order problem. So we would do the logarithm and that would be what we would plot against time. When we do that, we see this is not a straight line. So the next thing we try is what comes from the integrated rate law for second order reactions. So here is your integrated rate law for a second order reaction, in particular for this chemical formula. So you see here it says one over the concentration. And because of the fact that it's one over, then instead of gradually declining, it's going up. But the point is, if it is actually a second order, if you plot one over the concentration versus the time, you'll end up with a straight line. And again, you can look at this as being y equals mx plus b, so that you can see what the original, the intercept is one over the original concentration, m is still k, and y is one over the current concentration. So what you're really trying to do is this logarithm of x plotted against time, or does one over the concentration of x versus time give you a linear formula? So there it is in terms of a general substance x. That's your second order integrated rate law. The second order integrated rate law gives rise to a second order half-life. Our previous half-life had no reference in it to the substance itself. It just had a number and it had k. Now the substance does matter. The half-life is going to depend on how much of the stuff you started with. It's not an exponential decay anymore. It's a different type of decay. So we have a formula like this. The rate constant for the decomposition of chlorine monoxide is this. Determine the half-life when the original amount was this. And they tell you the decomposition is a second order process. You could actually figure that out from the fact of what these the units are in the value of the rate constant. But it's nice of them to just point it out that it's a second order process. Since they want us to figure out the half-life, all we have to do is plug in the two things that they gave us because they have the formula right here. The half-life is one over K times the original value of the substance, 10 to the ninth inverse molarity, inverse seconds. And that's multiplied by the 1.50 times 10 to the negative eight molarity. You can see the molarities are going to cancel. And then this is divide by an inverse. So it will just become seconds when we're done with it. We're gonna get 9.23 times 10 to the negative third seconds. Now, this is not a constant half-life. If you did this with a different concentration originally, you would get a different half-life. That's the important difference between this any other order and first order. In first order, that half-life is constant. It doesn't matter when you start. It's the same number every time, the same amount of time.